So the cyclin-dependent kinase 4 6 pathway is evolving as a important target for therapy uh, in breast cancer. Uh, we've known about the importance of cyclin-dependent kinases and the cyclin-D1, RB, CDK4-6 pathway for many years. Uh, the Nobel Prize in 2001 actually went to the discoverers of the basic biology between, behind cyclin-dependent kinases and their critical role in regulating cell division. And there's been a lot of work over the years about alterations in this pathway playing a role in the pathogenesis of many cancers, including breast cancer. One of the critical connections between CDK biology and the clinic was work uh, done by Dr. Dennis Slayman and myself and, uh, in collaboration with Pfizer. Uh, this collaboration between UCLA and Pfizer identified a role for palbocyclib, uh, a second generation, first in class inhibitor of the CDK4-6 kinases. Uh, and this work identified preclinically that, that ER positive breast cancers seem to be more dependent on CDK4-6 function. And from that preclinical work, uh, a clinical trial, the TRIO-18 Paloma-1 study was designed. And uh, the results of that study validated the observation that CDK4-6 inhibition may be important in ER-positive breast cancer. The 18 Paloma-1 study was a randomized, open-label, phase two study uh, to validate the preclinical observation that CDK4-6 inhibition and uh, anti-estrogen therapy would be synergistic uh, in inhibiting growth of ER-positive breast cancer models. This clinical study, which was published in Lancet Oncology, uh, at the beginning of 2015, demonstrated a real significant improvement in progression-free survival. This study took women who had advanced breast cancer, they were postmenopausal, treated in the first-line metastatic setting, and uh, the study had about 165 women randomized one-to-one. -one. The primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival, and women were randomized in an open-label fashion to either letrozole daily or letrozole plus palbocyclib, and palbocyclib being dosed on a three-week-on, one-week-off regimen. The results of this study uh, were really impressive. Uh, Progression-free survival, the primary endpoint, was essentially doubled from a PFS in the control arm of about 10 months to oh, just over 20 months in the combination arm. This translated into a hazard ratio of 0 0.49, uh, which is a 51% decrease in the risk of progression with the addition of palbocyclib. Uh, last month, in early February, the results of this study were the basis for uh, U.S. Food and Drug uh, uh, Administration expedited approval, uh, and so now palbocyclib has become the first CDK inhibitor approved in any cancer indication, but specifically in the ER-positive uh, indication with letrozole. So that was a phase two study. Now there's numerous phase three studies ongoing. Uh, there's a confirmatory study with palbocyclib and letrozole, the uh, Paloma 2 study. That study has completed accrual and we're awaiting events. The Paloma 3 study uh, was a study in patients who have hormone refractory disease, at least after an aromatase inhibitor, and these patients are randomized to fulvestrin or fulvestrin palbocyclib. And since the palbocyclib work, other CDK4-6 inhibitors have moved into the clinic uh, and moved essentially from phase one to phase three. A bemocyclib from uh, Eli Lilly, as well as LEE-011 from Novartis, and they are being pursued in the ER-positive space as well. This is really exciting data. The, the CDK pathway is relatively new as a validated target. Uh, Certainly in the estrogen receptor positive space, the backbone for treating that disease for the past several decades has been various uh, anti-estrogen agents. Uh, a few years ago, we did see uh, Everolimus approved uh, with a, uh, an improvement in PFS. And now I think the promise of the CDK agents uh, is, is really striking. Uh, and I say that based on the results we've seen from Paloma 1, where we saw this really unprecedented improvement in PFS with a, a very manageable safety profile. Uh, the, the toxicity, the most common toxicity we've seen has been neutropenia, which generally 
as uh, managed with dose delays or dose reductions. We haven't seen a high incidence of serious infections, even though they do develop neutropenia. It seems to be very transient and different neutropenia than with chemotherapy. And given that uh, this drug seems to be active or this class of drugs seem to be active and, and well tolerated, I think there's great promise to move this into the early stage setting of breast cancer as well as in other settings, other subtypes of breast cancer potentially, and even into other malignancies. Now that CDK46 is validated as a target in oncology, I think uh, we'll see it branching out beyond breast cancer as well.